Thank you for joining us today in the Loge, or in, not the Loge, wherever we are. Two old guys talking about vintage films. That's what we're doing. From the today. balcony. Oh, from the balcony, yeah. I, okay. I'm glad you mentioned. I'm glad you mentioned the Loge. When I was a kid going to the movies, they always had a price for adult, children, and a Loge. Mm. I never knew what the hell the loge was. Why would I pay extra? You know what the loge was? More expensive. Okay. Okay. Well, we're in the loge now, I can tell you that. Yeah, we are loge guys. Yep. Uh, so today's movie that we picked on um, vintage wait, wait, wait. I was supposed to give the name of the movie, right? Okay, so let's do yeah, that. Yeah, you were, but... Okay, you know, oh, no, I'm talking... No, John... John this is your movie. I, I know that there's a love affair with this movie, so let me have my little, you know, bits and pieces. This is about tomorrow's youth. Tomorrow's youth. Sounds like a soap opera, doesn't it? <laughs> tomorrow's youth. Yeah. So, I, Art, did you find anything you liked about this movie? Yeah, I actually uh, uh, sort of was a bit nostal nostalgic about our gang. That's sort of what it was. And what I really liked was I liked the uh, the young man who was just smarter than all the adults in the room and who yeah. figured everything out for everybody. That's what I liked. Yeah. Well, you know, that's interesting because Dickie Moore, who is the main name, the star of this show, Dickie Moore was, uh, this was made in 1934. The Little Rascals or the, the Our Gang comedy started in 19... 22 and silent oh. films. Dickie Moore actually appeared in a bunch of them as yes. the character Dickie. I don't know what the Tammy show has to do with anything, but Dickie Moore appeared as Dickie mm. in The Little Rascals. And uh, there it is, monogram pictures. Tom Tomorrow's Youth. <laughs> don't you love the names? Uh, Martha Sleeper and John Miljan. Ma 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 Martha Sleeper, I did all the research I possibly could. And I couldn't find a birth name named Sleeper. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, Dickie Moore is really interesting because um, as a child actor, he was very popular, started in silent films, which is, was a big deal, was the go-to kid, other than, let's say, Jackie Coogan or somebody, mm. in feature films and talkies, and had a long career, uh, went made films, over 100 films, right up into the 1950s. In fact, little trivia item I found out about um, Dickie Moore, as a teenager in a film with Shirley Temple, he gave Shirley Temple her first on-screen kiss, oh. which apparently was a big deal at the time. Uh, today, she'd probably have her clothes off somewhere. So here's the opening scene, and there's this blonde beep beep at below the office of the father the guy who turns out to be the father mm -hmm. and look at this don't you just love this mustache on this guy the suit and the mustache is this 1930s or what yeah and she's actually, kind of I, actually not that it really matters but monogram uh, pictures which uh, uh specialized in b movies actually had yep. a long run from like the early 30s to i think 53 so they were yes. around for a long time yeah, they were. And they made boomy they were unapologetic about making B movies, but they, you know, they were all good movies. They were all well done B movies. So here's the old man, the father, taking off for the weekend with the floozy down in the car. And who oh, the secretary is very suspicious. She goes to look out the window and who should she arrive? She who should she see arrive? as the old man gets into the car with the blonde for the weekend, but the wife. And the wife pulls up behind them. The wife watches the blonde and the husband take off for the weekend. And the, the wife gets... The husband who's no more than 15... The, the husband who's no more than 15 feet away from uh, his wife, never sees his wife, uh, and... Uh, uh, well, it looks like a daughter, but that's actually a son, right? That's 1934. What can I tell you? Right. That's the kid. That's yep. Dickie Moore. Goes up to the office while the wife spies the hubby and the girlfriend. Oh. Who are going so off you can for, imagine. For, they're going off for a weekend of business. Well, he was going off for a weekend in business in uh, uh, Boston. I, I remember Massachusetts with Boston. <laughs> right. Happened a lot then. He, I love the very, details. Yeah. He's anyway, a very busy guy. The, 
the whole movie's about this kid, Dickie Moore, right. um, who plays the son. And the, the, because they've, the mother saw the father philandering, uh, they break up. And the whole story is really how this breakup, uh, they don't actually get divorced, I don't think, but they break up and they live separately. And the kid has to go back and forth between the mother and the father. And it's all about how this terrible situation affects the kid. Um, do me a favor, go to about 947. So th you, they go through a montage here. Pittsburgh, Indianapolis. The mother takes the kid away and... Back uh, to, I think, probably havoc. her hometown. 947, the newspaper article. Now, this is, to me, this is, uh, this is typical 1930s. The, the blonde girlfriend's wearing a fur. The father's got that mustache. He's a, a successful businessman. Meanwhile, in the real life, you know, the world is coming apart. It's the Great Depression in 1934. Mm. So, of course, they have to make movies about the upper class, the people who don't have to worry about where their next meal is coming from and who can have girlfriends who wear furs, you know? Um, so ultimately, Dickie Moore, uh, the son, gets tossed back and forth between the mother and the father. And it's time for him to go be with the father for six months. Go, mm. go to 2158. So that here's the mother telling Dickie that he's got to go be with his father. At 2158, he arrives at his father's mansion and the butler has to give him a bath. And of course, the kid sticks the shower head into the butler's pants and the butler does a double take. Oops, what could that be? So there's some funny stuff in here. I have to, I have to say, it's pretty well done. And Dickie Moore really is, you can see why he was a popular actor. Um, but the fact of the matter is that uh, the, the, uh, the butler is one of the best characters. He's played by Franklin Pangborn. And mm. let me see if I've got another clip of him um, somewhere. And Franklin Pangborn is a famous character actor, and he's always very proper. And he's the, he's the kind of, uh, he's a kind of a butler-esque character. So uh, you will enjoy the, the character actors in this. Here's the girlfriend. Pretty girlfriend. Mm. Um, you mentioned earlier our gang had right. an element of our gang comedy. Go to 2830, and I'll show you the little section that reminded me of our gang. It's it's the kid playing with his... At, he's at his father's house, and they think he's uh, in trouble uh, because he's lost and they didn't check in, but he's playing football with the kids. Right. And yeah, course, they, but they printed a call that he, he, he was kidnapped. But he's not. Yeah. He's just if he's this, just having fun. If this doesn't look like a, a an R gang comedy, uh, I don't know what does. Look at the look at the cast of the kids. They they're no familiar faces to me, but they're all. Uh, this could be right. Just change the dialogue, and there's Dickie Moore right. in the middle of a crowd with uh, all the kids from our gang. So they put everything in this movie. I think uh, it's it there's humor. Franklin Pangborn, there's the R Gang comedy. Again, probably playing on the fact that Dickie Moore had already been in R Gang uh, films. And the the drama of uh, the divorce and the family comes back together. Uh, go to 3945. And uh, this, is, this is the triangle. It's where the, the live-in blonde floozy is with the husband, and the husband's been feeling uh, bad for his son, and he's, he misses the, the family. But she, of course, says, oh, it's nothing, you'll get over it. But, of course, the wife comes into this scene. Because she, and... she comes because the kid is uh, uh, in trouble, and they have a court case, uh, they have a court hearing on the divorce. Yep. So here's she, here's she coming back. She took the train back. And, yeah. uh, and of course, she uh, finds her husband with his uh, living girlfriend. Um, yeah. 
Uh, it's just a little bit more complicated than that, but you'll have to you'll have to you'll have to watch a few so. But I mean, well, there was know, there was a typical it, stuff that we saw on TV in the early fifties. You know, they had filler, yeah, it's, and it, I remember seeing is, stuff like this. Look, this is nineteen thirty four. It's a well done drama. It's relatively lighthearted. It, it's not um, overly dramatic, and it's a kind of in a, in a way, it's kind of a family film. Yeah, because it's got um, a happy ending like Hallmark. Oop, did I spoil it for anybody? And, it, and of course, it's got a happy ending. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I recommend it uh, if you want to. It, look, it's nostalgic. You exactly. know, it, it, you're not. This is not. Uh, what was Dustin Hoffman movie with uh, with Meryl Streep uh, about divorce? Oh, uh, Kramer versus that? Kramer versus Kramer. Yeah, Kramer versus Kramer. This ain't Kramer versus Kramer. You know, this is a relatively lighthearted uh, uh, movie. So I recommend it. I think you'll have fun if you watch it. I got a big kick out of Franklin Pangborn uh, and other character actors that are in there as well. And I love the father. I love the father who just had that 1930s handsome uh, mustache, good-looking thing. And also, uh, I, I, I want to I say something for the Ben Casey fans here. For the Ben Casey fans here, is that... This was the first, actually, uh, uh, a movie I've seen in a long time where uh, I, uh, somebody was diagnosed with a spinal injury and he was too uh, fragile to move to the hospital, so they scheduled it at home immediately. And uh, literally within um, uh, three or four days, he was up in the round again. So uh, yeah. for those of you for those who want real medical drama, we've got something in this for you, too. <laughs> Well, you, it, it, you know what? This is, I think this is one of uh, Vintage Film Channel, Channel's uh, medium successes. Uh, it's intact. It looks good. It's fun to watch. Uh, it's not a long movie, as Monogram didn't do long, blockbuster, uh, expensive well, movies. They didn't have the money. Uh, look, remember that uh, the piece they did in the newspaper must have taken up about a minute and a half. Uh, yeah. Whatever scrolling on uh, a, a piece of a uh, news clipping, yeah. but the point the point is like like uh, many things on Vintage Film Channel, it's nostalgic. So I remember seeing films like this uh, on television when I was a kid, and uh, uh, I, I I actually watched the whole thing. I enjoyed it. Yeah. Anyway, fun to watch. I recommend it. Art, I think you did a thumbs down, if I'm not mistaken. You're well, waffling on whether you like this it or was not. this was no uh, Saving Private Ryan, uh, yeah. but it, close, close. I have to admit, <laughs> in your in your view, uh, but yeah, yeah no. It, there's nothing on Vintage Film Channel that I wouldn't recommend for anybody who's of a certain age, or if you're, you know, quite frankly, if you're just a history of film, okay, you can watch all the ones that are on the on the ten. 100 classic film lists, but in here you're yeah. going to find stuff that actually was most of the fare that was out yep. in those days, and sure. it's just fun to watch, and and it, to me it brought up uh, good memories of uh, uh, those times when I enjoyed films like this because they were, they had a beginning, a middle, and an end, and the end was normally the good guy wins. <laughs> it ends with a happy ending, that's important. It, it does. All right. Well, we'll see you next week when we talk about another uh, vintage film or classic television show from Vintage Film Channel. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.